to the Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, presented by Belly Up Sports. All things hockey, all the time. And now, here are your hosts, two washed up beer leaguers who have no idea what they're talking about, Zach Martin and Alex Nuttle. What's up, party people? It is episode six of the Cannons and Tomahawks podcast presented by Belly Up Sports and sponsored by Pure Hockey and Spy Optic. We are your hosts, Alex and Zach. Zach, how's it going, man? It's been, uh, it's been a week since I talked to you. How you doing? Oh, it's been going good, man. You know, no complaints. You know, just burning the midnight oil, working overnights and stuff like that. And, you know, listen, watching and listening to some good hockey games. But overall, not too bad, man. How you been doing? Oh, doing great. Doing great. Had a... Awesome interview with Jean-Luc Grandpierre early in the week. Got done with our interview with the Native American Guardians Association yesterday, which will also come out on Wednesday, February the 17th, for those of you listening. Um, that was a really cool interview. Liked it quite a bit. Some solid guys, really cool information and things like that. So it's I'm excited for that to come out. Yeah, same here. It, it was great talking to them. We get like 30, 45 minute talk, just everything with the representation of logos and, you know, names and, you know, just the history and you know, a bunch of other stuff too. So it, I think everyone's going to enjoy it. It's a good time. So it's definitely going to get people talking, but I think overall, this is something that needs to be talked about. So I'm excited for everyone to hear that when it comes out on Wednesday. Absolutely. Well, as we're recording this, uh, just checking in, how are your Blackhawks doing? It's only two one, so I mean, I'm not too. I'm not super worried. I mean, we've come back from deficit deficits against you guys, and we have lengths and net. So I mean, I'm feeling good about it. You know, yeah. uh, well, I mean, we can talk a, about it more later yeah. uh, in the Blackhawk section. But yeah. like I, I told you earlier, man, Lankin and you guys have a stud, and that is a very, uh, yeah. very important piece of you guys' future for sure. Yeah, that was the one thing a lot of people. A lot of Blackhawks fans, including me, were worried about because, you know, we we had Crow for so long. We had Leonard. Both of them are gone. Then you're going into a season with three guys who are different levels of experience with the NHL. You know, Delia for that one season where Crawford was out for a long time. And then you had Subban had like a five-minute cup of coffee last season. And then you had Lincoln, who's never even been in the NHL. So to have Lincoln where he's at right now, he's – officially had his first bad game the other night which we'll talk about but overall yeah i mean i'm not upset for the fact that we got this kid and how and everyone's been saying how good he's been ever since the blackhawks got him especially how he played you know for the ice championships a couple years back we're in good hands i honestly i think that we're set in goalie for right now it's just who's going to be his backup in the future that's basically why it's at at this point yeah oh for sure so Today it kind of came out of nowhere and I don't I don't know if anyone really saw it coming. Uh maybe some Carolina fans or something like that, but out of nowhere I just get an alert on my phone that uh, there was a trade between Ottawa and Carolina for Ryan Dezingle going back to Ottawa and then in return they are getting uh the Carolina Hurricanes are getting Alex Galchenyuk and Cedric Paquette and jeez I mean that's crazy to think. Paquette, he was on the Lightning last year. He he won the Stanley Cup with him. And then in the offseason, he got – I can't remember if he signed. I think he was traded because they had to do a lot of cap maneuvering. Um, I think he was traded yeah. to Ottawa for some picks. And yeah. Galchenyuk is on his, what, sixth team in five years, which is nuts. Yeah. Uh, oh, geez, six teams. I would have, let, me, let me take a stab at this. Um, to, okay, I know it was Montreal – Arizona, Pittsburgh, then and we just said Ottawa and Carolina. I'm sure I remember who his sixth team was. Um, Think of Canada Junior. Are you talking about Minnesota? Uh-huh. Well, was yeah, he with he, the he, when? When was that? Uh, I think he got traded at the trade deadline last season because he only he played 14 games for the Wild. Oh, geez. Yeah. Well, there you go. Then that's probably why 
anyone outside of Minnesota didn't even realize who was with them because, you know, it's Minnesota. Who's outside of Minnesota Wild fans who's really watching Minnesota games? How boring that team is. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. we know some guys that live up in Minnesota that somehow like Vegas. Yes, we're talking about you. We know you're <laughs> listening, Derek. Funny how and that works. Junior, out. Baby. Funny how that works out. But, man, I don't know what is up with the guy Chanik for the fact he's on his sixth team already. It was like, whatever it is, I don't know if it's his personality or if it's just his game is not where everyone thought it was going to be. But for the fact you're on your sixth team in five years and you still can't stick, like, and he's been with some, he's been with some decent franchises too. Though. I mean, Montreal and Pittsburgh, I mean, they're not bad franchises. I mean, maybe at the time Montreal was, but still though, like, after a certain while, you think you'd probably get on with somewhere. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a personality thing. It could be a cohesion thing. He just doesn't fit in any of these systems. Ironically enough. Um, I, I don't know, honestly, but, I have, but I mean, even if he, you would think of at some point, like he would adapt and know how to play. Cause there's guys who've been on a bunch of different teams and that, you know, have worked in systems before that they go somewhere and they just click. So it's just, it's weird that for whatever reason, Galchenyuk is just a guy who just for some reason just can't stick with the team no matter what it is. So, I mean, maybe he'll get it on in Carolina and see what they do. But, yeah, that's that's kind of huge for Carolina to get two guys back for Dezingle. I mean, you know, get a Stanley Cup winner in Paquette and you got Galchenyuk who everyone still thinks has somewhat of a ceiling that he can reach. So, it would be interesting to see what happens. But uh, <laughs> Dezingle, Dezingle going back to Ottawa after to the team who traded him to you guys, that's – that's pretty interesting. Yeah, sure. I I would laugh. Like, I would go crazy if the trade deadline this year, Dzingel was traded back to the Blue Jackets. I know a lot of people that would not be overly happy about that. Oh, for sure. Um, we, de- we, de- we definitely get the new send, uh, new era sends guys on at some point yeah. to um, ask them about this because I'm curious to see what their thoughts on, on, <laughs> on getting uh, Dzingel back and giving up those two guys. And then, wasn't there another trade? Today, uh, so, between Ottawa? Um, no. Uh, there was a trade between the Blue Jackets and Carolina. So, oh, that's right. I knew, I knew there was another trade. I didn't know if it was yeah. Ottawa or not. It, it wasn't uh, much of anything. It was just a signing rights thing. We got signing rights okay. to Gregory Hoffman, uh, who I think he's playing the KHL right now. Um, and we gave them a 2022 seventh round pick. So nothing, oh, nothing, nothing crazy or anything like that. It's just kind yeah. of a... Hey, we want another pick. Okay, well, we'll give you this guy that we probably never would have signed anyways. Okay, fine. So, yeah, yeah it is what. But yeah, I mean, it's interesting though. Like we said with that with Ottawa and Carolina, that's yeah. I don't think I don't even know if Jeff Merrick or you know Chris Johnston or anyone really had a had any idea that this trade was going to go down. So it's probably one of those like out of left park. Like you weren't even considered this even yeah. happening. So. It'll be interesting to see what happens, you know. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, got me. This will be the team that Galchenyuk figures it out because you know, with Rod Brendamore as your head coach, I mean, well, first wherever. off, you're going to get some good workouts in. So, yeah, yeah. When, when you're when you have to get the head coach to get out of the uh, locker room, yeah, I think you're going to be pretty That's pretty much crazy. okay with getting some you know, workouts. In. Speaking of speaking of Galchenyuk, um, his previous teams, one of them is the Penguins. They brought on Ron Hextall. <laughs> As the new GM <laughs> and Brian Burke oh. as the president of hockey operations. Um, At this point, I think Brian Burke is on a pace to probably just work with every team in the NHL. I think that's what he, I think that's his goal in life yeah. is to find a way to work with almost everybody. Because I mean, as far as I'm concerned, on? I, I'm okay with it because the optimistically from a Blue Jackets standpoint is he'll let the Penguins tank. Okay, well, when we go back to the regular divisions in the Metro for the Blue Jackets fans, it's a good thing. So, yeah, it's true. I'm all right with it. I, yeah. Honestly, I don't know how that's going to be, though. Um, yeah. You know, having a it, former flyer as your GM. And it's, if, yeah, if, you know, yeah, a former player and a former GM of the Flyers as your GM. I bet you there's a certain someone on the Slapshot Sweethearts that's kind of not okay with that right about now, probably, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Yeah, speaking of um, – Megan, her new favorite mascot is Gritty. Um, if you didn't watch a stream that we had on Thursday, oh, um, she received a gift that is her favorite present of all time. 
Um, and it is a gritty t-shirt. So I know she loves it. Oh, oh, that was, was that the surprise gift that you yeah. sent her al- along with the, uh, the Kraken hat that you lost mm-hmm. your bet on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. man. That, that is, that is some, she, she opened it on stream and that's some high I'm, class drawing. I'm pretty sure class. she wanted to reach through the computer and strangle me. Hey, that's, you know what? That's some high class trolling, man. I mean, you know, she gave you a lot of crap for, you know, you losing your bet. You're like, all right, enjoy this gritty t shirt. So, yeah, have fun with that. So, hey, props to you, man. That was a solid move. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how those acquisitions for Pittsburgh is going to play out in the long run. I'd say maybe in a year or two, see kind of what happens. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out with, you know, it, because, are they going to rebuild or are they still going to try to build a team around Crosby and Malkin and all that? Because right now Pittsburgh, they're just old. And for a reason, it's just like, you know, I, I see it from both sides. Okay. I see it from the general manager standpoint of, Hey, the goal is to win Stanley cups and you look at it. And if you put intelligence into it, your team is old. The capitals are old. The penguins are old. The lightning are young but some guys are getting old. Like you have these teams that are good and they're getting old. One of them, the Blackhawks last year, they were super old this year. They're really young, but that's because a lot of those veteran guys are not playing. They're not there anymore. So I get it from the GM standpoint of, you know what? We want to get young. We want to start. I don't want to say rebuilding because that's Detroit is in a full rebuild. Um, the Detroit's just in a hole. They're not even in a rebuild. They're just in a bottomless pit of nothing because I I legitimately do think um, Stevie is going to get them out of the dumpster. I I really do. I have faith because the thing is, he has so much passion for Detroit. You know, yeah. being a former captain in Detroit and things like that. Oh he, yeah, he has the passion. Dylan Larkin has the passion. The guy, some of the guys that are I don't want to say staples there because it's kind of hard to think of anything anybody for Detroit other than Bertuzzi and Larkin, but those guys are the ones that you're supposed to be building around. And I think he's going to do that. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see how Steve White does it as the, <laughs> as a, as a guy whose team that you're, you basically hate the Detroit. You're hoping that they just continue to stink, but as an overall NHL fan, it'll be interesting to see how they do overall. So, yeah. I guess we'll see. We'll I'll give them another five years before they figure it out. So, yeah, until, it's until then I'll just enjoy them being in the pit of misery. Yeah, um, I mean, again, so with with Pittsburgh, you know, I understand it from the side of hey, we want to win, but I also understand and am confused at the same time with you know Mario Mario Lemieux, the owner, saying, "Hey, these guys are going to retire um, a penguin." Okay. So you have what Crosby, Malkin, and Latang saying these three are going to be retiring as a penguin. All right. Well, do you understand they're both like super old now? I mean, let's be real. Crosby's what, 32, 33? Yeah, you're still he, he still probably has it in the tank for another like six, seven years. And same with Malkin, basically. So it's like, what? So you're just gonna be okay with just having two guys just take up a cap, like take up a roster spot for the next se- six, seven years. Well, I think but it depends what happens. have a whole else around them. Like, it, I think it depends on what happens too, because apparently there were issues earlier with Malkin. Like he just hasn't been himself. And part of the issue was, oh, well, you know, you need fans and you play off the fans. So I'm like, okay, well then you're the only one making those excuses. So, you yeah, know, everyone, you're good. Everyone Don't else, get me yeah. wrong. You, you have your legacy at pittsburgh but if it were me i'd be sitting there you know what yes i would like them to retire as penguins if you get an offer for crosby one of the rumors that i saw was crosby for flurry (laughs) with vegas which that would be super weird but that would be that would be stupid it would be weird seeing Crosby with Vegas, but it would also be weird seeing Flurry back in Pittsburgh. But I mean, from a financial standpoint, it makes sense. You know, Pittsburgh, you got what Jari and Casey DeSmith. Casey DeSmith sucks, and Kristen Jari 
is good, but he has not been his himself this year. From what and, I have seen, he hasn't been himself. Which is funny because Pittsburgh picked him over Murray because they thought he was going to do a lot better than Murray, and now it's like, and let's be honest, I mean, they're both doing pretty bad, but I, you really can't blame Murray because he's with Ottawa, who we all know is not going to be great regardless. So you really can't put that on Murray. But for the fact that they picked Jari over him, and seeing that Jari still hasn't done what he what they were hoping for him to do, it definitely makes an interesting case of like Pittsburgh is going to be looking for a goalie. They have to be because at this point, they're I don't I I'll see them maybe I I even predict I mean I don't know if they're going to make it in or not, but it's going to make it interesting if Pittsburgh even makes the playoffs this year because their goaltending isn't where they'd hope it would be at this point. Oh. That's a, a double edged sword, too. With you know, hey, their goaltending's not that great, and then the east is just crazy like, the east is really, really good. Yeah, you know, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, it's like Washington's good, you know, the Islanders are still so kind of there. I mean, Boston's still doing really well, Philadelphia is doing good, too. So, yeah, it's like, how long do you want to try to go through the season with those two guys? Yeah, if you're going to struggle that much, right. Which I knew, honestly. I mean, um, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. I know you're not complaining about. Oh, no, honestly, <laughs> keep him. Keep Crosby till he's 50. I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> From Blue Check, well, we'll just beat him more. You know, we haven't had a ton of success against them in recent years, but that's slowly starting. I don't want to say it's slowly starting to change, but especially, for example, one of the teams is Washington. We had a pretty hard time beating them for a while. And then the last couple of years, we've gotten really good with beating them you know last year we or not last season but between last season and the season before you know we're sitting there shutting them out in washington we're beating them back-to-back games and it's it's really cool seeing the success we're having against against these teams that we didn't have the success against before you know for example yeah the blue jackets beat the blackhawks uh two nights ago and we'll talk about that a little bit later but the one thing with that that was interesting to me is that was the first win that the blue jackets have had in the united center in years like it's been a i don't remember exactly what it's been a long time well i didn't that, know that yeah well, you, well i mean you guys only come like once a year so i mean yeah that would take a while if you haven't been in chicago into the united center yeah now now we're playing you guys four and four so I mean, you, get, you get a little bit more of a chance to do it so it is what it is but yeah it's it's interesting to see how you guys are finally picking it up against teams that you should be beating. It's taking you guys a few years, but hey, at least you're, at least you're finally doing something, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. So, before we get to period two, the the other stuff is there's been a lot of games getting postponed because of COVID um, and yeah, all the protocols. Like, I think who was it? The Devils. They had like 19 guys on the um covid the protocol list one day like they had 19 or 20 guys or something like that it was insane yeah we there i mean buffalo there's a buffalo's been out colorado's been out like so many teams have been out like it's been insane it's been an insane couple weeks like teams have been off for like a week just to try to get back like and now like we're looking at a possible win percentage to get in so there, that's basically right now. You can't even look at these standings and be like, "Oh, look, my team is in this spot, my team's no. in that spot." It's like, no. In reality, you're no one knows where your team's at because if we're going by win percentage, there's teams that do have more wins that are still technically out of the playoffs because of their because all the because they've played more games, but their win, but their the other team's win percentage is better because they played less games and won more. So yeah. it, it's, I think it's it's really going to throw a wrinkle into the playoffs. Yeah, this year, you know, that changes a lot of the strategy, too, of, okay, well, you know, we have a couple games in hand against Chicago for just for sake of conversation, and we need to make sure we get at least one game to overtime. No, it needs to be a – now you just need to try and win every game because, one, you have no idea if the season's going to get canceled or paused again. Two, the Blue Jackets could end up with – 56 games played and then Dallas could end up with 42 games played. 
and, and, Dal- and Dallas would still get in because of points percentage. So they exactly. probably won more games than you guys did. Because right now, I think with our two teams, we've played an even number of games at 15, 16 tonight. And I think we're both like five, four or five games ahead of Carolina, Florida, and Tampa. Like yeah. that to me is not for the fact that your team's fourth, my team's fifth. And we're st- and we have games at hand on the top three teams. Like it, it changes that's, it. That's scary. That's you know, scary. because these guys now you have these teams that are that no one's wanting to go to overtime. You know, you're not willing to settle for that overtime loss point just to get that one point because it's that can matter. That can hurt you in the long run as it is. So you know that's why you're seeing more of these six to five games, four to two, four to three, three to two, because. Yeah, no one's playing it safe. You you have to you have to kill it now. These guys are taking more chances, and it's helping them out. Um, it's helping the team get more goals. So it's you know you're getting more offensive power. Now the goalies in general are not looking good this year, uh, just because of that. And that's you know you just look at random statistics. It's it is what it is. You yeah, I mean much about it. Yeah, I mean, you, like guys like Bennington and Carter Hart and Robin Leonard, like, yeah, like you, I, you would almost have to take this year as a throwout year for the goalies. Like, you can't really blame them a whole lot because the fact that some teams are going to do a lot of rotation, some teams are might lean heavy on their number one guys, but then you're talking about defenses that are probably not as sharp or some or rosters are depleted, so you're leaving a lot of goalies out the dry. So, I mean. While we look at Philadelphia, yeah, Carter Hart struggling, but we all know how good he really is. It's just unfortunate. It's just this year he just hasn't caught a break with hit most like flyers being out and everything else. So he really can't play. I, I like I said, I would take this year as a throw out for any stats towards the goalies, unless the goalies are just really bad in general. Yeah, like some teams have really bad goalies. That that that's a different story. But if you're talking like you know, Columbus, Chicago, Philadelphia, um, Winnipeg, Toronto, just a bunch of teams overall. You can make cases, you know, Tampa, you can make a case saying, okay, every goalie is going to struggle because it's basically like an all out onslaught of offense because it has to be because you, because all teams know this play, this overtime point is really not going to help us if we're going by points percentage by the end of the season. So it's still, there's going to be definitely a lot of grading against the curve and stuff like, like a lot of throw out of stats and stuff like that. So, yeah. And it, I think a lot of it, you know, they're looking at free agents and trades and stuff like that. They're, they're not going to be weighing these stats as heavily as they normally would in an 82 game season uh, with a preseason you know a lot of people forget that there was no preseason for these guys to get ready you know it's just yeah, a lot of scrimmages between their own team you you had 10 days you basically had 10 days to get ready like yeah. there's teams who take like what a month to get ready maybe three weeks you're like all right we got 10 days go so um score update carl soderberg just scored now it's 2-2 so at sixteen fifteen in the third, so <laughs> we, we're talking about overtime. <laughs> there yeah, might be it, an overtime <laughs> again. I I I don't know. Oh no, man. On. Well, so I can't, yeah, I, can't, I, can't take, I can't take another overtime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I I'm not sure, man. Um, yeah. One last quick thing: Lake Tahoe. The Lake Tahoe games are starting this upcoming Saturday and Sunday on the twentieth and twenty first. I'm kind of excited for those. I am super pumped. I'm know. excited for those. I think I think those are going to be fun for sure. It's it's different being outside yeah. on a golf course near the lake. So it'll be a a nice change of pace um, than seeing all of the games with the tarps and just the ads plastered everywhere. It'll be nice just seeing an outdoor game at mm-hmm. you know such a really cool and beautiful little area. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with that. That'll be pretty cool. Yeah, and they're not in a football stadium where the fans are like so far back from the ice now it's just going to be i don't scenery care. behind I, it, honestly so. i'd rather have that at this point th- well first off i'm still salty because the blue jackets have yet to have an outdoor game so that <laughs> oh, aside man, we're, on the, we're on this again dude Jeez. it's never gonna go away <laughs> it's never gonna vegas is getting one before us they're still in kindergarten and we've graduated high school 
we still don't you're, have you're technically you're, you're technically in college like so. we this is our this is what bugs me about it okay you know what? Let's do this. <laughs> We're going to move on. Period two of the Kansas and Tomahawks podcast brought to you by Belly Up Sports, sponsored by Pure Hockey and Spy Optic. Okay, so let's do this. All right. <laughs> it is the 20th anniversary of the Blue Jackets. Oh, Why man. in the hell do you not throw those teams in outdoor games this year? Throw the Wild out there, the Blue Jackets, the, the Predators, the Panthers. Like these are these are these expansion teams in that. 98 99 2000 timeline throw those teams out there nope let's put vegas out there why oh because it's vegas no why give me an answer well it's vegas great it's it's ridiculous i i can't stand it you know and colorado fine i don't remember the last time well i know they had one because i i remember seeing matt calvert St- they had the, they had the stadium series against uh the kings at air force stadium it's just, I don't know. It's frustrating. I it is what it is. I'm never gonna get over it until you know? until you get until you get one. You're gonna complain. You're gonna complain about it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> you know, because it's you know it's a small hockey market. Well, whatever. Winnipeg's had one. They have a smaller market than us. So, sorry, sorry, not sorry. Honestly, Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's Canada there, bud. Um, Canada, so, eh? <laughs> so speaking of the Blue Jackets, earlier this week, out of absolutely nowhere, had no idea this was coming. Uh, Zach, you and I were actually talking right when I found this out uh, that oh. Nico Koivu retired. This was uh, this was literally like four minutes after we just got off with John Luke Grand Pierre too. Like it was like right after we were just talking to him. That Koi was like, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jeez. So uh, initially, you know, I personally, I did not think this, but initially a lot of people were saying, oh, is this because of torts and the line A thing and, you know, him getting benched and he had gotten a healthy scratch the, the day before. And he said, no, it, a lot of it was, you know, he basically he said that, he wasn't able to get his play up to the standard that he wanted it to be, which I understand it. I get yeah. that. Um, you know, he's a lot of playing, people forget. Been, yeah. He, he played in like a thousand and forty six games or something um, over 16 years. Like he's no, been in a while that he was 37. People forget that. And then they also forget that last year he had a knee injury. So it's yeah, like, so. maybe he, he doesn't want to, re-injure himself and he's at the point he can retire fine yeah. um i mean it sucks because i kind of wanted to have that veteran presence with us but you know what i'm not mad it is what it is because the the way i look at it is we've had issues at center obviously yeah um the time he was here he was helping alexander texier get his face-offs kind of under control and get him to learn better techniques for winning face-offs and taking face-offs and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But with him retiring, that gives Kevin Stenland uh, an opportunity to stay in the lineup, which me, I don't understand why he keeps getting taken out because he'll come into a game, one game out of nowhere, and he gets like a goal and an assist, and then next game he's out. Yeah. Why? You know, the, the kid is, what, 6'3 or 6'4 with a beautiful head of hair. And he, it is nice. he has a long reach. He has long legs. He skates fast. But we're going to take him out and put in Nathan Gerby. I don't. I don't understand I don't, that stuff. I mean, I like I like Nathan Gerby, but well, I do no. too because he is not a, for this kid. Not for this kid. You don't take no, him out for him. No, I'm sorry. That's like, that's, I, I mean, it, that's like taking Patrick Line out and putting in Boone Jenner. Oh, or, it's, or or it's basically putting Line on the bench and not using him. Speaking <laughs> of that, since you decided to say that, so he hey, got, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, man. Got benched <laughs> in his fourth game. That was fast. Um, that, that did that did not take long. Well, did he initially bench like five guys in that game? So he benched Line, um, Dean Tukin, and Alexander Texier. Tex had less than ten minutes of ice time. He was the only forward with less than ten minutes, and then he benched Kukin, and now Kukin's been scratched 
uh, today and I think the last game as well. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm not the coach. Not going to speculate. I don't care. Line A, initially, they basically said that, oh, well, you know, Torts is on his thing again and, you know, he's doing whatever he thinks he needs to do. Well, then later it comes out that allegedly what happened was um, I'll update you guys won in overtime. So enjoy that. Let's uh, go, to, baby. <laughs> to break it scored on some oh, the, weird pass. Uh, the cat um, scores. He's been on fire recently. Yeah. So, I'm, so I'm excited about that. Anyways, it was uh, allegedly what came out was that he – it said mouthed off, but he bl- essentially blew off an assistant coach when they were trying to tell him something in the second period. Uh, and then torch just sat him the rest of the game. When that came out, hundred percent was on Torch's side said, you know what? He deserves it. Now it's kind of getting old in my opinion. The, you know, if somebody yeah. does something wrong, you put them in timeout. Like why yeah. you have techs sitting, why you keep having these guys who are promising young kids and you keep, playing them a game they do great and then you nitpick everything and take them out i don't understand that i really don't um you know it's reasons like that why i legitimately don't feel that torts is going to be back next year you know it's his contract is up after the season so he would need to sign an extension which i don't think is going to happen i think that they're going to essentially move on from him because I feel like Columbus has hit a ceiling with what we can do with him as our coach. Um, and that is one year and that's it. You yeah. know, there was um, on the stream Thursday, uh, we had a wonderful lady from skating with stilettos on. And she told me this, which I hadn't paid attention to, uh, but she said they were, Somebody did some digging and they basically said Tortorella's best year statistically with every team is his fourth season. And then he just kind of starts falling off the board and then that's when he'll either get fired or leave or anything like that. What year um, is he in right now with you guys? Six. So looking at it, his fourth season was a year that we swept Tampa. Oh. Because he came in in 2015. So I think the 2014, 2015. So that would have been his fourth season. And so, so basically, we're looking at the same trajectory of he hit his fourth year, and now he's going to start losing his mind, and basically going to have the team be like, "Yeah, we're going to need you to go." Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say it's in losing his mind, but I well, think yeah, well, not losing his mind, but like basically everything's going to start falling off the tracks. Yeah, it's basically what I mean. That, that's been I'm a not. Bad. I'm not degrading him he's a stanley cup winning coach he's one of oh, those same, yeah the, i'm not i'm not, I'm not winning him either american born coach like uh, i love what he did for columbus i love that he came in and what he's done for the franchise and got us over that hump of hey well one year out of 14 we got into the playoffs and then we got just steamrolled by detroit well then we've been in the playoffs for the past four seasons and then i think five of the last six like yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not, okay I'm, with that. Yeah, I'm now, not degree, I'm I want not the degree. cup. Don't get me wrong. I want the cup. That's the goal. I don't care yeah. about, hey, I want to be president's trophy winning team because clearly that team never wins. Um, it's just, it's, cur- it's cursed. It's, yeah. it's a cursed spot. And honestly, and like I said, I'm not degrading him either. I'm just saying, from what I meant was basically, we're seeing this. We're on a, probably on the path where he's going to, where everything that falls off the tracks and he's going to be gone. So I'm just, Put it out there. I'm not saying it's, you know, he's losing it or, you know, I'm not saying, oh, he's a, he's a terrible coach. It's yeah. From what you've told me, from what that lady said, um, we could be on that track right now where it's, he could be gone at the end of the season, like you said. So yeah, it's, and it's, 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 it's wild. You know, there's a lot to it. I know he has said that with the lockdown, you know, he was able to enjoy more time with his wife. Um, he does a lot with rescue dogs and animals in general, and he's been able to spend a lot of time with that. And he said that he's enjoyed it. He's enjoyed it a lot. Um, which, which is awesome. So, I mean, yeah. And, you know, it's, if he wants to be with his wife and enjoy life, go for it. I am all for that. You have every right to do that. Yeah. You know, you've, you've had a long career. 
go do it. That's fine. Here's yeah. my question, though. He leaves. Who do we have? Who is out there? What are they going to do and bring in freaking Mike Babcock? No, thanks. I won't be a Blue Jackets fan anymore. They're going to bring in freaking Lindy Ruff when he ends up getting fired. No, sorry. Um, I'd rather lick a doorknob right now. But yeah, I, I, I mean, know. Gerard Gallant, but he already played for or he already coached Columbus before. Now, um, it was a while ago. And things have know. changed. And he's changed as a coach. So maybe, but go, go, uh, what, yeah, call up Laviolette. Maybe he'll come and join you guys in Columbus no, unless thanks. he's, <laughs> I'd rather go back to Ken Hitchcock. Oof. I, I don't know. I just think that, you know, yeah, he leaves. That's, that's half of the battle. Then the other part is who do we bring in? Because the thing is they would have to tailor that to, Hey, all right, we're going to bring in this guy. All right. Well, if you bring in one guy, you have to sit there and understand that that's going to have a an impact on the guys that want to resign, sign extensions, come in and free agency, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Patrick Linus contract is up. I guarantee he won't sign an extension until after the season's over. They're going to protect him, you know, and this all a lot. There's going to be a lot that plays into with the Mm -hmm. expansion draft as well. Who's going to yeah. get protected? Who's not getting protected? Who's going to go over there? Who they're going to release? You know, so on and so forth. But I think a lot of it is going to play into what coach can you get? Because in the next two seasons, we have every single person on our roster, other than Cam Atkinson and Oliver Bjorkstrand, that are up for a new contract. Every single person. I am not envious of Yarmo Kikalainen's job for the next couple of years because that is going to be a massive hassle to get through. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now the biggest piece is Patrick Line because Cam Atkinson and Oliver Bjork are in part of our future. Cool. We're done with that. Got that out of the way. No big deal. Then it needs to be Patrick Line. Then after then, that, it needs to be Seth Jones and Zach Wierenski. They've both specifically said they are willing to have long-term deals, not long-term contracts, but long-term deals in place with the blue jackets. Now there's a difference. There's more to that saying, you know, Hey, we'll be here for six or seven years. It, you know, we'll be here at least four more years. And it kind of depends if we get here, so on and so forth. A lot of it's like under the table conversations. Um, but you know, a lot of that, it's going to have an impact on a lot of the concept of who's going to come back and who's going to sign and who's not going to sign and who's going to leave, who's going to come in free agency. Um, the goalie situation too, because you got to figure out what goal you're going to keep. So yeah, you guys, like I said, I don't envy Yarmo at all because this is going to be a stre- This is going to be a couple years stretch where he's just going to be mental hurdling a lot of contracts. Yeah. So. Oh, for sure. But you know, I, the one I, thing I is, don't. I don't envy I, his job. <laughs> no, I 100 percent trust him though. You know, the oh, stuff yeah. that he's done in the in the past, and you know, especially what really showed me that I truly trust him was the um, first round pick that we had in this past draft. You know, we got Igor Chinikov. Out of nowhere, nobody had any clue who this guy was. Um, and I still remember when he said it on the video, he had some little smirk to it, kind of he knows he's playing with everybody, and I thought it was hilarious. But everyone is like, who is this kid? No one knows who this is. Yeah. Uh, even the analysts are like, hey, dude, he's like not even in the top 100. Well, come to find out, this kid's a stud in the KHL. Um he played for Team Russia in the juniors. Like he is really good, and I'm hoping he develops into a really solid kid that will come and play for us in a couple of years. Whenever he ultimately comes over, yeah, man. European scouting is no joke. Like the Blackhawks and the Blue Jackets, like both of our teams, luckily know how to do European scouting, right? To find the you know, diamonds in the rough. Because and we'll talk about the Blackhawks and all of our rookies soon, but yeah, yeah, Yarm- yeah, Yarmo is not messing around. So no. Everyone wants, to, everyone wants to talk about Canada and the States, but shoo, European scouting, man, there's just there's a lot of European guys and a lot of guys from Russia coming over. It's no joke. Well, I mean, the you we're, know, that, we're getting Latvians and Germans and like, yeah. we're getting a bunch of guys. I, we're getting guys from Scandinavia and Russia. We're getting guys from like other countries now coming over to the league. You know, it's always been that, you know, Russia, Western Russia, Eastern European type thing. Now it's starting Canada. to spread. You know, last time yeah. I checked, the miracle on ice didn't happen against Canada. It happened against Russia. 
You know, yeah. it's it's always been in place. Now, granted, I'm not taking it away from Canada at all. Hockey is part of their culture. And the same goes for hockey with Russians. They just have different play styles. Russians are the bigger, more aggressive, physical guys. For example, Ovechkin. And then you get the Canadians who are more of the finesse and more of the skill over power type guys, more of Crosby and Big David. The you know, Like you get good guys from both. It just kind of depends on how do you want to tailor your team. And yeah, I think it, the Blue Jackets are starting to tailor it more to that Russian side of it, which I don't mind at all. Um, honestly, I couldn't care. We could bring guys in from Zimbabwe for all I care. If we won the cup, then that's fine. We'll have the the Jamaican hockey team for all I care. I just want to win Stanley Cup. Uh, and yeah, either Stanley yeah. Cup or outdoor game. If we get an outdoor game, that's a Stanley Cup to me. Wow, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you look at the Blackhawks, like, you know, like you know, most of our guys are from like we have Kershev and Pius Suter from Switzerland. Yeah, we got dudes from Switzerland on our team scoring goals at will right now, and. Kublik's from the Czech Republic. Like, there's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of Czech guys in the league. I mean, there's no. there's been there's been. I mean, there have been a few Czech players, but it's not a whole lot. But now we're getting Swiss players now, and they're doing stuff. And you know, Lincoln is from Finland and all that. But still, though, it's like yeah, you, the European scouting overall has gotten a lot better over the last few years. So it's been interesting. But how about this though? We're talking about Yarmo finding guys in the rough. <laughs> Uh, getting Ross, I think for the fact that Yarmo got Line A in the Roslovic PLD trade, mm-hmm. was yeah, just it was phenomenal. it was so generous to the uh, Winnipeg Jets to just toss in Patrick Line A in that trade. Uh, you know, Pierre Luc Dubois for Jack Roslovic. Um, Jack Roslovic, dude, like no one's like, oh, this kid, like this kid's maybe decent. He'll maybe kind of start for the Jackets. Blah 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 blah. This dude's got like what nine points or whoever it is in like nine games or something like that. Like the I'll be dude, honest. So I don't, I don't know if he's got any points. I mean, overall they're like, geez, so where did this kid come from? Prior to the season, um, there were the you know the fan rumors of hey, the Blue Jackets should go trade for Jack Roslovic because this was at the time that he said told Winnipeg I'm not going to show up to camp um, until I get a new contract, but I want traded. So I'm not going to show up to camp. So I said, okay, we won't give you a contract. Well, that's when the line A stuff started going more and Blue Jackets were like, okay, we'll trade Pierre-Luc Dubois to Winnipeg for line A and Rostovic. And then everyone's like, oh, you know, that would be funny. That'll never happen. Oh, crap. That actually just happened. Uh, okay. Um, you know, line A scored tonight, which was cool. And he got into a fight, his first fight in his career in 314 games, which is pretty cool yeah. but Roslovic, the kid is insane first off he had an absolute just filthy goal against carolina that goal was absolutely stupid in all in all sense of the good of you know all good that it was because oh my word that was nasty yeah um you know so he had that goal he has had a bunch of assists the kid is just coming out of nowhere you know it's I looked at his stats before and I really, I legitimately didn't want him on the team. I was like, I, this kid would, I don't, I don't see what they want from him. And then he comes over and the kid kind of is, won't stop smiling because he gets to play for his hometown team. And now he's on a tear. He's getting goals and assists constantly. He's on the top line with Cam Atkinson and Patrick line. And the, the kid is just insane. He's on the power play. I think I've seen him on the penalty kill. He is he's a good player. And a lot of it I feel like yeah, he was being know, utilized as a wing. Too. Yeah. He's he was being utilized as a wing in Winnipeg and he wanted to be a center, but Winnipeg wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Well, now he goes to Columbus where we needed centers and we throw him at center. And guess what? The kid is insane. I am cool with it. Keep him at center. Don't do anything. Yeah. Um speaking of the game against Carolina, okay. First off, oh, I, I, I was waiting for this. I so, was waiting for this. <laughs> first off, earlier in the week, Elvis Merzlikens got hurt in practice. He was out um, on IR, off IR, whatever. He was out with an injury, and he's back. He was activated, um, and he was – the game tonight, he was backing up Jonas Corposalo officially, which why he didn't play 
beyond me, but whatever, no big deal. Um, and Zach Wierenski was back from the IR also, and he made his first start from the IR, uh, being on IR for like a week, came back. Um, so with these guys on IR, quick side note, with these guys on IR going in and out and all the COVID postponements, how screwed is your fantasy teams right now? Every single one of my leagues, my teams are a disaster because I have like half the team are all postponed. Two more guys are on IR. One's on IR for uh, COVID protocol. I mean, it's it's insane. It's almost impossible to figure out fantasy teams right now. Yeah, luckily, thank goodness for all my dynasty teams, I have Dreisaitl and Tavares and a bunch of other guys who are just absolutely just, puck it, just putting pucks in the net. And I got like four goalies on my team. I have... Leonard Bennington and Lincoln in. Yeah. So it kind of works out that I actually have good goalies and the fact that I have a really solid defense for Winsky coming up, uh, coming off the bench for me. But yeah, dude, like I got a bunch of guys that are either out for COVID postponements for Buffalo. Cause I have all of sitting in Ryan Hart. And then I got three guys on the IR yeah. Murphy, Taze and Sagan. And I'm just like, luckily I have guys who got, luckily I got guys who can score points for me right now. And I have good goaltending because yeah, yeah dude, fantasy team, like even if our, our small league that we have, we were just doing for one year our cause our league is stupid deep. Like half my guys are out. And I'm like, oh, this yeah. is just, this is, this yeah. is insane. Yeah. It's frustrating. I mean, um, we, we want everyone to get better, but at the same time, it's like, geez, <laughs> fantasy hockey is just absolute. Just it's rough this year. In terms oh yeah. Of, yeah, it's man, it's definitely a take it day by day type thing. Yeah, waiver uh, waiver wire claims and yeah. trades and everything else and free agency. There's like probably like no guys left to even pick up. So you're just trying to go with whoever you have at this point and yeah. pray you score enough points to win the week. So this game against Carolina, um, if there are any NHL refs listening, you suck. I I can't stand you guys. <laughs> So at the end of the second period with, I think it was like a minute and 15 minute and 25 or something left. The hurricane scored a goal and earlier in the play, they were off sides. Sports throws a challenge and they go through. And this was had to be one of the quickest challenges I've seen in quite some time. And the referees come back and say, you know, there was a challenge that for offsides it, the play was on sides. It was a good goal. And then yeah. Columbus got a bench minor for, I think it was a minute and 15 seconds or it was a, it was a two minute, but they played for that remaining minute 15 in the second. Yeah. Well, in the second intermission, apparently the referees notified Columbus that there was a, a communication error between the on ice referees the situation room in Toronto and the replay officials off of the ice at the game. And originally it was supposed to be deemed that the play was offsides and there was no goal. So what do they do? They keep the goal and then they take off the remaining 45 seconds of the power play to begin the third period. And then they just, the NHL essentially removes Quartz's coaches challenge from the record. So it just didn't exist. So basically we went on the power play for a minute and 15 seconds for absolutely no reason. And they don't bother taking the goal away. Like, so th that would be the perfect time to take it away because what's the worst that can happen. You, you add a minute and 15 seconds on. So essentially you're going to play 21 minutes and 15 seconds in the third period. And then what every single statistic from time on ice to shot attempts to shots or anything like that goes away from the end of the second period. You know, it's not happening in the middle of the second period. You're not going to add 10 minutes on. It's a minute and 15 seconds. Who cares? But, you know, the NHL, as usual, hates Columbus. So they don't care. They're like, oh, all right, well, we'll just leave the goal. No, I don't think they hate Columbus. It's just the fact that the NHL's making the best they go. And, of course, they just can't get most of the things right because it's the NHL. So, I mean, are we really shocked? No. So. I mean, it, it's not the fact that they're trying the best they can. I understand that it's there's no consistency at all. No, no, I'm not saying they're doing the best they can. There is no consistency. This like, league, I think it, this, it, this league lives on inconsistent with the inconsistencies of their rules. Like looking the at the, the replay, I think Trocheck was like six inches off sides. It was blatantly off sides, and then yeah. you immediately are like, oh no, it was on side. 
No, dude. Look at the replay. You have so many different video, the camera angles and different options to look at this. And then the replay officials in the situation room should be like, dude, no, it's offsides. Why are you telling them this? Well, they, well, they no, they tell them if it's onside or offside. That's the crazy part. They're one to tell them that. Like you, the whole Matt Duchesne thing in Colorado, they got to the skate blade by like the millisecond. Well, to catch them offsides. But this dude is so technically offsides. That was onsides because the puck was last touched by no, one of no. the opposing players. No, no, I know. I'm just saying, but no, but they. Yeah. But at the time, they called them offsides. But they, but they went down to like to the millisecond to get that call. Yeah. This one, it's so blatant, but they still miss it. Yeah, because you said it's inconsistent, but it's like you have all the evidence to show you that he is offsides, but then you really have to nitpick the Duchesne onside offside call. In Colorado, when a goal is scored, it's yeah, it's I, the I league, don't know. The, this league thrives on the inconsistency. It's frustrating. It just seems like stuff like that happens to Columbus. You know, for example, there was this, there was the um, incident where Ports got fined um, December 29th, 2019, Blue Jackets against Chicago. I will constantly forget that because this is the game that there was an issue in the third period. The clock ran down an extra five seconds. We scored at the very last possible second in the third period, and they said there wasn't enough time. Well, if you would have added that time on, then we would have scored and won the game. We wouldn't have gone to overtime. We wouldn't have gone to shootout. We wouldn't have lost Corpus Allo, and he wouldn't have been out for three months with a, what was it, I think a torn ACL. Something like that, yeah. Like, th- none of that would have happened. Yeah. Just if they would have paid attention and added five seconds onto the clock because the clock ran down longer than it was supposed to. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Ports' press conference was hilarious, though, because they asked him a question about this. And basically he said, you know, I'm going to let the NHL explain this one. I'm out. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he doesn't want to pay another ha- fine. He, yeah, he's, he's just not happy. He's like, no. yep, nope, I'm good. Um, so with that, we'll tie this in with period three. So... 11 goal game between the Blue Jackets and the Blackhawks. Um, so heading on to period three of Cannons and Tomahawks podcast brought to you by Belly Up Sports and sponsored by the dope people at Pure Hawkins by Optic. Go get hockey stuff. Go get sunglasses. Use our link in our link tree. It's awesome. I promise. I just ordered some sunglasses today. Now, this 11 goal game made no sense to me. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is coming off of a week that you know where the hurt, where the Blackhawks had just an absolute insanity of the fact that we had when we won back to back games in overtime in Dallas. So the fact we swept Dallas was amazing. But yeah, then we come to you guys, and then it's just the third period was just an absolute. Like the second period was, I thought the second period was crazy, and the third was just an absolute just onslaught of goals. Like it just got stupid in the third period, though. Yeah. Because they scored, what was it in the third? Like, let's see, uh, let's like see. five Ak- or six goals total. Uh, let's see, Atkinson and Mitchell scored in the f- first. Bodan, Suter, and Roslovic in the second. Yeah, so it was like three two. Yeah, it was three two going in the third, and then you had Patty Kane, Boone Jenner, Roslovic. Debrinka got the go ahead. Delzato got the tie goal with like at seventeen nineteen in the third, and then at eighteen forty six, <laughs> freaking Stenland. Gets a wrister to get the game for you guys, dude. So we like we were up on you guys, and you guys scored like two goals. To I cannot get- emphasize how much I love Stenland. He is such an underrated player. It's crazy. <laughs> I hate Stenland. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't hate him, but like that third period that was just absolutely ridiculous. You should hate yeah. Roslovic. That's who you should hate. Roslovic, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his yeah his clapper in the second, then his wrister in the third. It's like the like. Now, you got Ros- you had, Ros- Roslovic has been a problem for us. I don't know, I don't know what is people deals. right now. Roslovic has just been an issue for us. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You had two rookies get their first goals that game, right? Yeah, we had Ian Mitchell and Nicholas Bo- uh, Nicholas Bodin get their first goals of that game, which was pretty fantastic. I think they did it like pretty pretty quick. So, I believe uh, it, it was the second period because one of yeah. them, like they both happened within the first two minutes. Oh yeah, so yeah, so it was one nothing after the first because Atkins the scored. Yeah, then it was twenty one seconds into the second. Mitchell got his got his goal. Then at one seventeen, Bo Dan got his goal. So yeah, they did it like per, 
they did it within like of eight stack, like pretty quick of each other. Yeah. So that was a quick like bang bang. We're up two one after when you guys had that one nothing lead after the first. But yeah, great job by those guys to good on them for sure. I mean, oh, it's always oh. good having rookies score their first career goals. Like that's rookie, pretty sweet. Rookie demon scoring goals too. Like it was the youth movement that was getting us yeah. that lead. Both oh, for sure, man. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's really cool. I always love seeing rookies get their first goals. Um, yeah. And then, and then we had then we had another rookie in Pius Suter netting his six of the season already. Like this dude is, he's coming out of nowhere. Six goals already this year. Like, and that's part. That's one half of the Swiss connection of him and, and Kershaw. It's absolutely stupid. Then of course you know Patty Kane scores, and then you know the Brinkett scores later on. But then, yeah, that third that third period was just. I have no words for how that period. I mean, that, that was that was probably the that was probably Lincoln's worst game. That was kind of on him because you really can't give him the blame in the Florida game when they lost in overtime. And this one though, there's honestly, a games, I wouldn't a, say a, that was a bad game for him because Corpus Hall looked like crap too. It's so that's like what we were talking about earlier, where there's just some situations you can't put it on the goalie. I think it's just one of those games where the offense for both teams was there. There was no, there were, I would say there's one or two goals he would probably want to have back. But yeah, overall, it wasn't really his fault. It's just, well, of course, the Blackhawks defense, defense has been decent, but it's also, we, I mean, we have a bunch of rookies on our, on our blue line right now. So it's, it was like, it's one of those games where it was like, you really can't play the goals because it was just an offensive onslaught the entire game. It's just the defense has kind of collapsed on both goalies, essentially. Because, yeah, well, that was, Blue Jackets that was, defense has yet to show up this year at all. You guys Wierenski's have defense? been no. Well, no, you have Delzato, so you yeah, got someone. Woo. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Seth Jones has been non-existent. Um, Wierenski's yeah. been non-existent. The it's the solid line of Gavrikov and Savard, who block thirty-seven million shots per game, has just not been there at all. It's funny that the guy who you got on a PTO contract is your best defenseman. Well, there's, I mean, and of course he scores his first goal of the season against, against us. It's like, yeah, of course he did because it's freaking Michael Dozato. Well, <laughs> I would right. be more upset if it was Savard. He hasn't scored since game one of the um, 2019 playoffs where we swept Tampa. He hasn't scored a goal since. He didn't score a goal last year for you guys at all. Nope. Mm-mm. The, the dude is a monster at blocking shots, but he didn't score. He did, he was the only one on the team that didn't score a goal last year. I bet you the I bet you the no is the sign of a barn. He'd still miss it somehow. Um, he's just he's not an offensive guy. I, he I would know. hit it. He just isn't offensive, so he's yeah. not gonna. Yeah, he's not gonna hit it. So yeah, no, I, I know. Delzato, it's it's a pretty cool story um, with him because he played for Torts when he started in New York. Uh, yeah. When Delzato started in New York, um, when Orts was the coach there, and he had a lot of issues with him. He was constantly getting scratched and benched and dropped down from top line to bottom line, getting his time on ice cut. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that was that a, was a wild time. Yeah, that was wild. He, he went through a lot of struggles with him, and apparently he kept in touch with him all these years. And he's one of the guys that has been public saying, you know, Torch has changed the player I am and the, the man I am today and things like that. So it's, it's really cool to see that type of a transformation, you know, the guys maintaining that contact with these old coaches. Um, it's stuff like that. Why I don't want Torch to leave, but you know, like I said earlier, I, I kind of want him to, to yeah. change it up. Yeah, so uh, quick update. Three stars of the game. Uh, Kevin Lincoln with 29 saves gets a third star. Cam Atkinson gets the second star with a goal and assist. And Alex to bring it with the first star with the game winner. Oh, Who? hey. Hey, you know what? We love splitting with each other, apparently, because that's what happened in our last series. Yeah. You take the you take the first one, we take the second one. So that's I mean, fine. I'll take three or four points. You can have two or four. No big deal. You can sit there and be all boo-hoo all you want. <laughs> Three or four. Doesn't matter because all you're going to do, whatever. You're going to send me a text later with a gif of, oh, here's Patrick Kane holding the Stanley Cup. and No, whatever, no, man. no. I'm not St. Louis Blues fans. I'm not going to do the pretend. Pretan- oh, my gosh. I'm not going to do a potangelo. Th- Doesn't that- matter. He plays for Vegas. No one cares about him anymore. 
But yeah, no, but that's that's all Blues fans did for an entire year. It was like, oh, oh, ooh, we won the Stanley Cup. It's like, yeah, it took you long enough. Uh, to, to be fair, one. every single team does that. Who Pittsburgh wins fans the Stanley are the worst, Cup? Though. I Pittsburgh can't fans, stand. Pittsburgh fans are the worst, though. I can't stand Pittsburgh fans. Ninety-nine point nine percent of Pittsburgh fans, I can't stand. There are a small percentage that are okay, but. Overall, I'm, I, I I'm don't. Curi- like I'm them. curious who that one. Per- I'm curious who that point one percent is. There, just some people I know at work that are Penguins fans. They're not. It's more of a, they just like Pittsburgh in general. Um, so you can't really get mad at them. But yeah. a lot of them are like, "Hey, I like the Penguins." Okay, do you know what icing is? I have no idea. Okay, well then you don't really follow hockey a lot. You just watch or, the games here and there. Or they never been to Pittsburgh. Well, th- these are people that lived in Pittsburgh, have gone to a couple of Penguins games, and then you ask him, hey, tell me a guy that's on the Penguins, Sidney Crosby. Tell me someone else. Well, I don't know. Okay, well, that's yeah. fine. I'm, I'm not upset, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but that yeah, that game, though, uh, it, it's, it stings the fact that we had that lead, and we're like, oh, this is this, – because I tweeted on, the, on, the, on our podcast where I'm like, hey, someone check on Alex, see how he's doing. Mm-hmm. And then after the game, I'm like, I purposely you know, be- didn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> I purposely didn't respond because I saw it right as uh, we scored the fourth goal. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and leave it and let it sit. And then if we come back and win, then, you know, I'll just pour some salt in the wound. And uh, I got to do that. And that was great. Well, n- well, no, you really did. Because then I jumped on Twitter and I retweeted that tweet. And I said, well, this age wall. So basically I kind of roasted myself from like, I'm going to be humble here, you know, to just, you know, be like, yep, that uh, did not work out as well as I thought it was. So yeah, that yeah, is what it is. It happens. Oh, I'm not upset. Yeah, but hey, we got, we, we, we got you guys back tonight though. So, I mean, and over I'll time, take it. Three or four. Again, I'm okay with it. Now, it, if you look at the standings, Whatever. ironically enough, we actually have the exact same uh, win percentage or points percentage. Whoa! Like yeah. that's <laughs> at a staggering five sixty two. Wow, we are the, just killing it this year. At this rate, man, I'm not even going to worry about the standings until we get like within like the last month of the season. Oh, I, because don't, of the, I don't really care. I'm not going to pay attention to the standings, honestly. I I'll look here and there, and just to make sure, you know, just so I can see what our record is and where we would be at with points percentage, but. Overall, there's so many game um, in hands back and forth. It doesn't matter. Yeah, at this point, like I said, I'm with you, man. I'm just checking to see where we're at, like all records and all, like where we're at. Like basically, I'm just gonna look at guys' stats. That's all I'm really gonna care about. Is like see how everyone's doing. Yeah, and where we're at in terms of oh, what's our actual record for the season, so we can talk about it. But in terms of oh, we're gonna make the playoffs, I have absolutely no idea because at this rate. Who knows what team are going to be in the playoffs? Because of well, the, honestly, the- for, from a Blackhawks <laughs> perspective, I wouldn't care. And the reason I say that is because you've already exceeded expectations so far. Because everyone thought they're going to be terrible because Taze is out. You know, Doc's you had, out. You had Keith out. Uh, Doc is out. Crawford no, left. Keith, no, Keith isn't out. Seabrook. Well, out. no, he was. I'm, Keith I'm was, saying Keith was never out. It was Seabrook. Whatever. You have, you have, <laughs> dude. What does it matter? It's eleven o'clock. I'm tired. Um, hey, no, I'm, you I'm had some. Trying to be faculty accurate. <laughs> it's gotta be accurate. <laughs> um, no, you, you guys have had a lot of big pieces that are out. And, yeah. Well, we, you know, we had plus we had a lot of guys out for COVID too. We were yeah. still winning games without guys on COVID, like Debrinket, Boquist, Carpenter was out. Yanmark was or not Yanmark out. Walmart was out. Now Connor Murphy's out. He was retroactive to Saturday, but he's been on the IR since Tuesday. And Andrew Shaw once again is on COVID, uh, not COVID protocol. He's on a concussion protocol. Which, if everyone remembers how that last year went with concussion protocol, he missed the rest of the season since December. So hopefully Andrew's okay. But yeah, for the fact of like you said, where we're at right now, that we have a winning record. And we have like we're making a case to make a playoff spot. I'll take it because even I said we might finish six at best. But yeah, we, we're we're keeping up with that. We we just swept Dallas. I mean, you know, we split with you guys again. But we just swept Dallas, and we took almost max points from Carolina. Where we're at right now, I'm okay with the fact that we're playing well and that we're exceeding expectations. 
I, I think you guys will be if we make it great least, if not I think you guys okay. will be at least sixth place because whatever tank job is going on with Nashville is hilarious I'm loving it I do not I do not stand Nash I cannot stand Nashville no I, their fans, I, their fans are the worst. Their traditions are absolute trash. And they, I wouldn't say their they, fans are the worst, but they're probably the most annoying. No, the, the, some of the chants they do are pretty annoying, and the fact that they raise a banner for absolutely everything they do, which is just an absolute joke of it in itself. Oh, the, that what, the, just shows the, what, that the, the franchise is a joke. The, the 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 Western Conference regular season champs, like no one cares. Mm-hmm. No one cares that you won the Western Conference in the regular season. Yeah, they should just start raising a banner every single year saying, hey, here's what place we finished in. Congrats, guys. No one cares. Uh, yeah, they they can be like the Hawks from uh, Mighty Ducks where they have like all their all their pennants and they have like their second place finish <laughs> in that yeah. one year. Oh, speaking of, I watched the Mighty Ducks yesterday and I forgot how much I love that movie. Uh, for the first one? Yeah. It was good. Yeah, the first, it, it's, it's good to relive a, a lot of the old movies, but then if you watch the Bar Downs, um, how they ref the games, you know, uh, I think it was, it was, uh, Luca and I think Eric and they actually refed like the movie, like there's so many blatant calls that were missed in those movies. Oh yeah. But I mean, it's it, a movie. That's well, fine. I know, but, I, but, but no, if you've, if you've seen, if you haven't seen it, yet, I would recommend watching it. Cause it's pretty funny. Cause like, you look at the stuff, you're like, yeah, a lot of these calls are just absolutely like, Oh, yeah. Should have been calls. Like, there's no way the Ducks should have won any of those games because mm-hmm. there was so many interference penalties and just a lot of stuff. But, but no, go. But going, it's if we finish at least six, I'll be happy. If we if we still make a case for the playoffs, I'll be happy with it too. Either way, I just looked at this year as we're looking to build and help out the young guys because we got Bodin, we got Ian Mitchell, Kershev, Suter. Lincoln in like we have so many young guys on this team. I mean, even Kalanuck, um, we have like Kalanuck was an extra tonight. He would, he didn't play, but he still skated as an extra, as an extra player. Yeah. Um, and he's on the taxi squad. So I'm curious to see if they're going to Kalanuck a shot at some point, but honestly, where we're at right now, I'm happy with how this team is. So, uh, only thing we need to go is, just go up from here and just keep playing really well. And you know, everyone's basically everyone's back other than Murphy and Shaw. We basically got everyone off of the, off the COVID list. Yeah. And of course, Lincoln, Lincoln with a great bounce back, you know, he only gave up two goals to you guys tonight. So he's basically back on form again. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that Carlton gave him a shot again. To get yeah. Back. He had a good game. Uh, Lincoln had a good game. Cause that second goal, it, I mean, it was a deflection. You can almost never No, the get, most of the time those go out. against the goalie. No, I would say all those you can't really can't win the goalie. Like like I said, that's if you're going back to the Florida game, that was exactly what happened to him. Like three or like three of those goals were basically all just tip ins off of people. So no, Lincoln. I like because Jeremy Culleton even said before the game, like they wanted to give him a chance to uh, bounce back from that and build on that yeah. because of his demeanor. Because the fact that he was you know he was calm, cool, collected. He didn't lose his mind. He just, you know, went about his business. And Jeremy's like, you know, what? we're not going to let you sit on it for a few days. We're going to get, we're going to put you back in net and see how you respond. Yeah. And once again, this kid shows that he's got the maturity level and the fact that he can play solid in net. And like I said, my next jersey is probably going to have to be a Kevin Lincoln in jersey because this dude is a stud. Like you yeah. said, I'm. Dude, like our our three goalies that we had, like your two goalies and, and us having Lincoln in shoot man I I honestly wish that that Columbus and Chicago would be in the same division with each other every year because think of Elvis and Lincoln and just going against each other for the next few years like those would be fireworks every oh, single term so Lincoln that would be so much fun to watch question about Lincoln and so his contract is up after next season do you see them signing him long term. Oh heck yes, you have to. There is there is no doubt about it. Like you would have to be monumentally stupid to not re-sign this kid because he's already playing well above a level that you would never think of. I mean, I I, I don't have it on me right now. I don't even know what his record is right now, but his record's got to be absolutely stupid good, and his save percentage has to be like in the somewhere in the nines, like nine thirty, nine forty. Like it's got to be just stupid good. I mean, he's like I say, he's only given up. He's only had two games where he's given up five goals or more. Everything else has been like three or less, for the most part. So I mean, you you would all you would have to re-sign him 
to a longer term contract. I would give him at least like a four or five year deal. Yeah. Depending on how much it is. Like you would have to give him like four or five mil a season. Like so you, you, you would have to find something you have to, you have to get him back. Wow. So he is right now he's five and two um, with three overtime losses. So five mm-hmm. and five, but five and t- five, two and three. Yeah. Um, he's got a 2.55 goals against average and a 924 save percentage. That's really okay. good. Okay. Yeah. Nine, three, nine. I think because I know at one point it was at nine, three, but yeah, you have a nine, two save percentage and what do you say? A two, five, five goals against. I mean, I think any this season right that's now, good, especially for your, for a rookie. That's good. Yeah. A rookie goalie who the, the, this is legit his first season. And you have a guy like, I think any team right now, even if it was a vet or a rook, you would want to have a goalie that's in the mid twos right now, yeah. because with all the goals they're getting scored, I think, what was it? What night was it? I think it was like, so with those, was, keep in mind that is not including tonight's game. Those statistics are not okay. including today's game. Okay, but still, though, I mean, what was it the other like? So like that night where was it that eleven goal thriller? Like there was fifty six goals scored that night. So with all the goals that are being scored right now, I think Ainsley would want to have a goalie in the two fives right now, in the save percentage of the nine twenties. Like, yeah, no. To answer your question, yeah, you have to resign him. It'd be dumb if you don't because. <laughs> This kid's on another level right now. You would have to find a way to keep him. I don't I, get I, trade Subban, do some with Delia. I don't care. You got to keep linking him. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. He's going to so, be a very important part of the future of you guys, especially after losing Crawford. Yeah. So let me ask you, so let me ask you one quick question before we head out um, here soon. Who would you want to keep between Elvis and um, Corpy? Long term, if if you're only, I know you want to keep both, but if you had to pick one to keep forever, I want to keep both. Want? It's not going to happen. Um, I and I know that because of salary cap issues, we're not going to sign both. That I have an argument for both guys. Um, so Corpy is more consistent, mm-hmm. um, lower key, and you know you're going to get the play time out of him. Yeah. Um, and uh, Statistically, he's going to come at a lower cap hit than Elvis. So that's a good thing. But Elvis, in my opinion, has a higher ceiling of play. Um, and, you know, it, I think Elvis is able to stay a little more calm in situations where he gets shelled. Uh, you know, like, what was it? The other night when one of the goals in Corpy got scored on, he just kind of threw a fit real quick. You know, granted, goalies are going to do that. I get that. Goalies are a different breed. Goalies are psychotic maniacs. But I don't know, honestly. Um, If Fortz is gone, honestly, I think they'll keep Elvis Um, and then see what happens with Corpy. But I really don't know. I have no idea what they'll do. Um, I'm clear. I'm who I would keep. I'd probably keep Elvis. Yeah. Um, I, I'm curious to see if Yarmo pulls a, like, a, like a magic, like he just pulls something out of his hat where he gets both those guys assigned to really friendly contracts to where they can keep both of them. I don't see that happening. Um, so I never say never. I mean, it's, it's still possible. Yeah. No, there's it, still, it, it still is. There, it is. Are you my, you're telling me there's still a chance? <laughs> <laughs> my mentality with it is Corpy was sitting behind Bob for so long as a backup and he finally yeah. got his chance. And then, all of a sudden it was, Hey, well now we have this other guy. And now it's like, you, you guys are both starters. And I don't know if Corpy is okay with that or not. Obviously he's not going to say it because he doesn't want to start anything, Yeah. but I don't think he's okay with it. And I, my personal opinion, um, and the reason why I think we could do without having the more consistent goalie is because of the amount of goalies we have in our depth right now. Yeah, you guys have well, you guys have so many goalies. It's unreal. Because you know we have what uh, so between we have Corpy and Elvis, and then we have uh, Matisse Kivalinix, who Elvis and Matisse are two of the three Latvian players in the NHL right now, which is kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, then we have Daniil Tarasov. We have Vanny Vevalainen. We have Brad Thiessen, which uh, he's kind of like a backup in the AHL, but mm-hmm. um, we have. What was his name? Cam Johnson, the guy that we signed to a one-year deal. Uh, he backed up Corpy the other night. 
Um, he had never, he's never played an NHL game. I don't think. Um, but we have a bunch of other guys in the, in the KHL too, that are just in the system. Like we have a lot of goalies, so I'm not overly worried about losing one. I just, when we ultimately lose one, I hope it's the right guy and then we can get them to a better deal for the team. Yeah, for sure. It's just, it's risky because both of them are going to be unrestricted free agents. They could both walk and then we'd just be screwed. Yeah. Oh, it's, it'll be an interesting situation, but you know, at least luckily for our teams, at least we are, at least we're in a lot better places than other teams that we actually have goalies that we know that we could probably rely on in the future Yeah, with whoever you guys pick for you. And then hopefully Stan Bowman smart and extends Lincoln. And so if he gets, if he extends Lincoln and whatever Yama figures out with your guys, we're right now looking pretty solid in goal and net for the future. And now just for the Blackhawks, we got to figure who our backup's going to be because Lincoln is our goalie of the future. In my opinion, yeah. I can easily see Lincoln and getting that contract extension prior to next season starting. Once that so. window opens to where they can start signing the guys in their last year, I can easily see him getting that extension. Honestly, I see uh three or four years to start. I can see three to four. I'm, I'm more so hoping for four to five. If we at least get that four, if we get four, I'll be happy. If we get that five, that'll be even better. But well, yeah, I'll be, I mean, I'll be it'll okay be better. A, I'll be okay with a four. I'll be okay it'll, with a four. It'll be better. Yes. But the thing is now it's with goalies. It's so risky. Look what happened with uh, St. Louis and Bennington. It's, Oh, Hey, this guy is amazing. in this last half of the season, let's sign him to a four year deal. And then get rid of Jake Allen. Okay. Well, now Bennington is okay. Like, you know, I, you shouldn't sign goalies to huge contracts. Look, Florida, Bob, I mean, they're doing really well this year, but they signed him to drop $70 million on him. And then all of a sudden he's, his five hole is bigger than the state of Texas. <laughs> Pretty you know, much. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, yeah. Three or four years I'd be okay with. So as, as long as we extend them for longer than two seasons, I'm happy. Yeah. So, well, you'll have to, I think a lot of it's going to depend on moving cap space and yeah. Just, with cap space between Taze and Kane, you know, if both I'm of those guys are still there, like you're going to have to, they're going to have to figure that out. Well, you all know that. that's the thing. Like granted. Yeah. Are they staples of Chicago? Yeah. But the thing oh. is, do they want to go where they're cap constrained until both of their contracts run out? Like I've said before, and Johnny Nani brought this up too, teams are going to have to give up so many guys and so much capital to get one of them. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't know any team that's going to take that $10.5 million contract per season. And oh, give I'm, up I'm the, not and saying it's going to happen. The, the, the probability of that happen, happening is so low. But, you know, if you were Chicago, hey, well, here's 10 and a half. If you have somebody willing to make a trade, all right, well, now you're going to sit there and send me, you know, a first liner, a second liner, a fourth liner, and a third round pick. Okay, fine. Uh, I can, you can deal with that for the same amount of cap space. Now you're getting more, more guys for the same amount of value. So I, yeah. But, you know, that's one of those things, like we said with them, you should always entertain an offer, at least listen to what they have to say. The worst thing that happens is you say no, and then, okay, yeah. cool, thanks. Basically, yeah. So, we'll see. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, I think that about wraps us up uh, for episode six. Zach, do you have any closing comments for the fine gentlemen and ladies listening to our Ear Biscuit pod? Uh, nothing other than the fact that it feels nice that we uh, – and the podcast, knowing that my team beat yours to split yeah. the series again. So, yeah. I mean, three of four. That's fine. You can't let me just enjoy anything, can you? No. <laughs> you have cups. I don't. I don't care. Deal with it. I mean, I would invite you over to drink, but what am I going to pour your drink in if you don't have any cups? So. I have a can right here, baby. <laughs> I have a can. It's from the souvenir shop. Hey, you know what? Whatever, whatever may, helps you get through those days. But no, other than that, though, I mean, you know, it's. It was a good podcast tonight. It was a lot of fun. Um, excited for the special edition to drop next Wednesday. Uh, excited for our guest next week, which we will announce at some point soon. But other than that, man, it's been a good night. Good night talking hockey as always. And I'm just excited for uh, episode seven next week. So for sure. Yeah, yeah it's going to be cool. Um, again, 
watch those Lake Tahoe games next weekend. Those are going to be some pretty cool games to watch. Other than that, you know, this is about it for episode six. This is again, this is Cannons and Tomahawks podcast brought to you by Belly Up Sports and our wonderful sponsors, Pure Hockey and Spy Optic. Remember, guys, catch us on Twitter at Cannon Hawks Pod. Also, go into our bio on Twitter, click our link tree. You can hit our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can go check out our awesome sponsors. You can also sit there and check out all of the other cool people over at Belly Up Sports, all the other podcasts, all the articles, everything else is on bellyupsports.com. The link is going to be in our link tree. Until next time, guys, remember, it is all about beer, food, and hockey.